Time delayed RCD sounds like a contradiction in terms when you first think about it. The whole point of an RCD is that it will operate really quickly to disconnect a circuit when a fault occurs, and more specifically, when someone's receiving a shock to earth. But even with that last sentence, we've shown a bit of a misconception about RCDs and what they're for. Now, just before we address that misconception, if you're watching this video on any of our social media accounts, click the link in the description to view it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate. If you're already watching it as part of that training package, then the sun will seem dim next to the brightness of your intelligence. Now, back to basics. To protect people and property from the dangers of electricity, we have different layers of protection. First up is basic protection. This is what we put in place to stop us from touching live parts that are meant to be live under normal operating conditions. So things like wrapping conductors in insulation, putting live parts in enclosures, and so on. Then we need to think about how to provide protection when it's all gone horribly wrong and electricity is getting to places that we don't want it to. Usually an exposed conductive part has become live and we want it not not to be live for very long. This is what fault protection does. So circuit breakers, fuses and so on will operate automatically and disconnect the fault. But in many circumstances this isn't enough and we need to provide what's called additional protection. This is in place to provide high levels of protection to people and livestock from getting electric shocks. Over the past few years in editions of the regs the use of RCDs for additional protection has gone from a nominal provision in a small number of situations to the point where now it's actually quite hard to install a final circuit that doesn't require RCD protection. And this can cause us to forget that RCDs aren't just for additional protection, but can also be used for fault protection. A good example of where RCDs are used for fault protection is in TT systems, where the DNO doesn't provide an earth connection from the local transformer. So the electrical installation creates its own earth connection by connecting to an earth rod or mat or similar, and is driven into the actual literal earth that we walk around on. As the earth path back to the transformer uses the literal earth we walk around on, the resistance of this path is really big. This means that if an earth fault occurs in the property, the current that flows is very small because of Ohm's law. High resistance, low current. Because this current is small, it won't cause the overcurrent device to operate, and so the solution is to use a device that is sensitive to small currents flowing where they shouldn't, or, as we call it, an RCD. So let's say you're protecting a final circuit in a TT system. For the reasons outlined earlier, you'll probably need to use an RCD for additional protection. And so an RCBO rated at 30 milliamps will disconnect overload, short circuit, and high impedance earth faults, either through the wiring system or a person. But what about if this final circuit is connected from a submain or a distribution circuit supplying lots of other circuits? A problem arises here because we need to use an RCD to provide the submain with fault protection. If this RCD is rated at 30 milliamps, then we run into an issue with selectivity. An earth fault on the final circuit will cause the RCDs protecting the final circuit and the distribution circuit to trip at the same moment, thus disconnecting healthy circuits. So what's the solution? We find the answer in BS 7671 Regulation 536.4.1.4, which covers selectivity between RCDs. Skipping over the general requirements, we come to selectivity in case of residual currents and reads, selectivity in case of residual currents, as shown in figure 536.2, is given under the following conditions. It then outlines two requirements, both of which must be fulfilled to be compliant. The upstream RCD is of selective type, type S or time delay type with appropriate time delay setting, and the ratio of the rated residual operating current of the upstream RCD to that of the downstream RCD is at least three to one. So this is where the time delayed RCD comes in. The most common type of time delayed RCD is the type S as mentioned in the first requirement. There are other types of time delayed RCD such as the APR but in the context of this situation the type S is generally the best option. In fact the S actually stands for selectivity and should be printed on the device as you can see here. The type S RCD has a function added to it that introduces a time delay when it detects a fault. So any of the other types of RCD AC, A, F, B and so on can also be type S. However, this time delay by itself is not enough to prevent both devices tripping in the event of a fault, as it's likely to hold off tripping for a matter of milliseconds rather than seconds. So to achieve proper selectivity, it must also comply with the second part of that reg. So the RCD providing fault protection to the submain cable must have an operating residual current three times bigger than the downstream RCD on the final circuit. So if the RCD protection on the final circuit has a rate 
rating of 30 milliamps, the upstream RCD protection on the distribution circuit should be 90 milliamps or above. Most manufacturers will produce a time delayed RCD at 100 milliamps rather than 90, which is even more acceptable. But don't be fooled into thinking you can game the system and just install a 100 milliamp RCD without a time delay and achieve selectivity. If you did, in the event of an earth fault, it's likely that more than 30 milliamps would flow and both devices would still trip. It's only when both the requirements of regulation 536.4.1.4 are met that we can be confident of achieving selectivity. So there we go, that's one example of where we might need to use a time delayed RCD. If you're watching on our training platform then answer the multiple choice questions that follow and move on to the next video. If you're watching on one of our social media channels then click the link to move over to the free training package and get yourself a certificate or you can watch the same video in the series right here or by clicking the link in the description to find out what all the fuss about type B RCDs is about. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.